Good. Uh, welcome back to the second part of this uh, presentation. Uh, first, I would like to do the sleep test. Uh, so I'm asking you, where did I leave right before the break? At what stage of the design of the component? Missing slides and custom page. Excellent. At least one was not sleeping. OK. Let's move on to the next stage. And as you have seen in the previous part, we did not yet have any interaction with user input whatsoever um, of our control. So typically, you will want your control uh, to react to mouse input, to keyboard input, things like that. So how do we do that in a FireMonkey control? The good news is that is, it is simple because it's the same as in the VCL. So let's have a look at our next sample. Um, maybe first have a look at the style definition of this sample. What do we have here? So we have a style definition. Our component will be named uh, T Custom Interaction Control Style. Uh, I mean T Custom Interaction Control. The style is just a suffix to indicate that it's our style. <laughs> so that means that this control will show how we interact with the control with the mouse or with the keyboard. And our control consists of a rectangle and within this rectangle we have a text element. So to handle keyboard and mouse input, we are lucky we can use the same techniques as we did in VCL. We just overwrite some protected methods. In this case, here we have the mouse down uh, method override. I've also implemented the mouse wheel override and I've uh, the key down override. Uh, for keyboard input to work, it's of course important that's the same as in the VCL, as in Windows in general, our component must be able to get the focus. So that's why I initialize the property can focus by default to true because we really want the keyboard and the mouse to interact with the control. Let's have a look at the internals. Um, we have the same style contract to get access from our control to the text that is inside our style because that text element will hold a value that is a property of our control. So we need to implement the apply style override and we need to get from our style the element that we want to update. We gave it the name here T, uh, TXT element and you can see here style name defined for this T text uh, object uh, T, TXT element. <coughs> That's the one that will change if we click the control, if we use the key uh, keyboard uh, on this control. Um, what we also do here is uh, we assign an on mouse down event handler to this text element. We could have done it in a different way, but it shows you how you can not only access the properties of these elements like T rectangle, T text, T whatever, you can also attach event handlers, event handlers that are uh, handled on component level. Something that is also uh, important to understand is how the event handling of the mouse is in a hierarchical uh, set of objects. Um, typically, you can consider it as elements that are within your control 
and have a kind of Z index. So you can have a T rectangle, but another T rectangle can be on top or partially on top or whatever. Or a T rectangle, a small T rectangle can be within a T on top of a T rectangle. By default, it's the element with the top Z index that will capture mouse input. So your mouse down will arrive on this upper element. <laughs> you can avoid that if you do not want that all the elements will handle uh, the mouse down themselves. Uh, by setting the property that is a, a, a standard property already available, I believe it's on uh, at least on T-shape level, most likely on TFMX uh, level, the hit test property. Um, so let's add a new uh, FireMonkey HT app if I would insert uh, a rectangle <coughs> here and on this rectangle I add another rectangle if I would click this rectangle by default this rectangle will uh, trigger the on mouse down event if I do not want this to happen I want my container rectangle to handle the event I would set the property hit test to false. So that could have been in the example component another implementation that I handled the mouse down uh, on the level of the component and did not assign the on mouse down event of the t text element within my style. That's just a choice, but I wanted to make clear that it is possible to assign event handlers to uh, elements within your style. So, uh, let's have a look at the override for key down. <coughs> so, this key down is on the level of the control itself, and is because it's a focusable control, it will receive our keyboard input. <coughs> and what I do here is simply handle the up the arrow up key and the arrow down key. And uh, from this um, key event, I will just uh, increment or decrement a value that is in the T text element within our style. Load from resource, we have seen that uh, it's just loading our style from the resource. Then I have the mouse down uh, event on control level. And here, if I click the control in the upper part, it will um, increment the value. If I click it in the lower part, it will decrement the value. I do the same thing for the mouse wheel. So if my mouse wheel rolls up, increment the value, roll down, decrement the value. Uh, here, I have still some custom painting on top of my style. I left it from the previous uh, example. We have our property setter, as I've also explained in the previous uh, samples, that it was important to uh, force that the style is reapplied after you change this property because this property affects a setting of an element in our style. And finally, I expose here uh, an event on the style element level to the control level. So remember that this text click uh, method, I assigned it, where was it? Here, in my on mouse down on this text element, I propagate it to the control level and make it available as a separate event. So if you click the text within our control, you get a separate event, okay, your text was clicked. So let's install the component. And let's test it in our uh, FireMonkey application. This is our component, so custom painting that you see here. And this is our t-text element of our style. If I run this application, if I click the upper part of the control, it decrements, increments, if I use the key arrow up, 
but you cannot see it, but I'm actually pressing arrow up, arrow down. If I use the mouse wheel, it changes uh, my value. Um, let's hook up our on text click event handler. To see if this works fine. So if I click here, <coughs> nothing happens. If I click here, nothing happens as well. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's bizarre. So uh, I said hit test to false. So it's quite normal that it did not happen. So I update my style. Actually, I believe that I should be able to do it in a better way without all the work. I go to default style. I have here my text element. Um, where is my, uh, my app is running? My app is running. Okay. Hit test. And here it's true. How is that possible? Apply and close. I run it again. That's, not, that's bizarre. Let's force it this way. So hit test. I've set it here to true. Now I need to um, force the resource file to be recompiled. So save the RC file again. Build it. What was it? A remark? No, no, demo 5 is the package of the component. So I install, force it to install again, build the application. Let's see if this, and it's not working. I'm not sure why it's not working. I will need to. test is uh, true on this level so it should catch my on a rectangle level yeah on a rectangle test no my my t text sits in the t rectangle so <coughs> i would expect that the t text will catch the mouse and it's not necessary to define it on the t rectangle level so uh, the only thing <coughs> I can think of is maybe the hooking up normally apply style. Let's see if this is executed. So my on mouse down event handler to the T text element is really assigned. I'm not sure why. And it is, you can see that it's cold again. If I click uh, the label, you know why? Because the text property changed. The text is part of the style. The style, something changed in the style. So I need to reapply. So that's why it comes again in this apply style override. But why? Here, the on mouse down is not triggered on the T text level. I'm not sure. I, I will probably, I will see after the session if uh, I have some time to uh, figure that out. Okay. So we had some interaction. Uh, let's add now some animation. As you know, animation is a built-in feature of the FireMonkey framework. It's there, it's available, and you can also build in animations in your controls. So what we are going to do next is use an animation and uh, trigger it from the control. So let's move on to demo six. <coughs> A 
the animation is in the style for uh, Demo 6. Uh, so let's have a look at our animation, really, really simple. Uh, we have a custom animated control, a rectangle again, and in this rectangle we added um, an instance of T-Color animation, a standard um, class available within the FireMonkey framework, and it's this class that we will use to implement an animation from one color to another color when some event happens in our control. So let's see the source code. Um, get style object is a typical thing, it's to load it from um, <coughs> the resource. Code to load it from the resource. And what we do here in our mouse down event, we look up the animation uh, element within our style and we tell it to start. <coughs> That's what we do. I have here in comments some additional things. We could manipulate, change the properties of our animation from code. We could do it here, but nothing prevents us. And it would be probably recommendable to change this from the style because there we, cannot, we will also be able to access our animation element within our style. Let's build. Uh, the package with our control and see how it looks like when it, I um, use it in a new FireMonkey app. That's not the one I want. That's the one I want, want. so a simple rectangle. If I look at my default style here we see the rectangle and we have our animation defined within this rectangle. And here we see the things that we have preset in our style file, color from, color to. I can change it if I don't like it. Uh, let's make it uh, this. I have not changed the color, just the animation starts from, not the, the color of the control <coughs> itself. So let's run this application, click it, and you see that it changes <coughs> with this animation from green to uh, yellow. If I think that this animates too fast, I pick the color animation and make the duration a little longer. That's all I need to do. I click and now you can see that it takes a longer time to do this animation. So. You can manipulate this animation via the style editor. You can do it via code if there is some specific need to do that as well, via the style contract. Okay. So, let's take another step deeper into uh, custom component creation for FireMonkey. And that is, um, using custom shapes. So far, you have seen that I have used, in many cases, the T-rectangle to create something that consists out of T-rectangles. FireMonkey itself has a couple of other shapes, like I believe there's an ellipse, uh, a line, uh, some basic shapes. But in many cases, that is not sufficient uh, for specific needs. So that's the point where you would create a custom shape. And this shape will descend from TFMX object. Um, and that means that you will be able, once you've created this shape, to uh, use it in your control. Um, so let's have a look at a basic sample of using a custom shape which I use in demo 7. Here, I have my basic control that descends from T style control, and I call it T custom shape control. So far, nothing special. 
is just always the same override of get style object to uh, load my style from the style resource, uh, load from resource that does it actually. But here, the key thing here is the new shape that I implement, the T diamond shape. Here I descend from uh, T shape, which is the base class for all shapes. The T shape already um, provides the fill property, the stroke, different stroke <coughs> property. So what you use to fill what you paint and the borderline of, of this. The only thing I need to do here is expose them, make them uh, pub published properties so I can access them. And then in my painting override, I will do something with this fill and stroke to actually do some custom painting. So if I have a look here, what I do is quite simple. Uh, think about the polygon in uh, VCL. You have the T path data class that is what you typically use in the FireMonkey framework to do drawing like that. So I create a T path data. And then uh, I draw, let's say, the out, outer border of the shape that I want to draw. So uh, a diamond is like uh, something like that. So I simply paint <laughs> from the upper to this side, to the bottom, to there and there. That's what's happening here. So set one point, draw three lines, close the path, and I'm done. With this path, uh, I can use the canvas fill path and the canvas draw path to fill this shape, to draw the borderline of this shape. Uh, that's, that's all what is happening here. Something very important is that we need to register this shape and we force its alignment already to top aligned, meaning that our shape will sit top aligned within our rectangle. So the shape is a child of the T rectangle. Uh, so that's how we predefine this uh, particular style. So let's build and install the control, add a new project to use our control, this is the custom shape control. As you can see, <coughs> here we have our T rectangle with our diamond shape inside the rectangle. If I go to the default style, you see here the rectangle, you see here our own custom shape, and you see that we can change its properties uh, any way that we want, like this. And so we can build up our own custom controls made up of any custom shapes that we want. <coughs> so that was the next step in our way to producing custom controls. Now move on to uh, something uh, different, uh, something that you will encounter in uh, many cases when you want to design a real-world custom control. Uh, this typically is the case. Uh, I'm trying to find some real-world, uh, let's say, a list box. If you have a list box and you fill the list box with items in the Windows world, all items within our list box have the same uh, look. So in the FireMonkey world, meaning the same style. They, for example, they have a white background, they use the same font to, to draw the text within this um, <coughs> item of the list box. And when they are selected, they are all the same uh, blue and white text. So in the FireMonkey equivalent, all items within our list box have the same style. So we have, we have multiple items, but they share the same style. On the other hand, there might be cases for, let's say for a list box, it's desirable that we define, okay, an item has default white background, black text on it, selected is blue and white text on it. That's desirable that we have just one uh, place where we define how an item appears, that we do not have to bother to create 
uh, styles and properties for every item in our list box. Uh, we would have a lot of work to do otherwise. In other cases, it is desirable that you have items, things that make up your control where you want to specify for each item in your control, okay, this one must be red, this one must maybe be a diamond shape, this one, etc. all different. So next steps are uh, having a look at approaches to uh, use these two cases. One style used by multiple elements in your control or every element in your control being styleable having its own uh, set of um, properties to define the style. So first of all, um, in the first demo, we will have a look at how we would create the items itself. That's, that's of course the first uh, thing that we need to do if we have a control that has multiple child items. Uh, so let's have a look first at the style template of this uh, control. What do we have here? Here we have um, a style definition, which is again a T rectangle. And this is the style for custom items control. Okay, you will see in the code what we will do with this uh, <laughs> specifically. I have my control that descends from the start control. Uh, same as we know from previous samples, load from resource, get style object. What we do here is introduce a property item count. So this property will control how many items I have within my control. So what I need to do is first have a look at the set item count property setter. So what I do here in set item count is a uh, private property uh, item count. I update it with the value that was set. I have two methods, update items and update style. Update style will force FireMonkey framework to reload the style to reapply it. Update items, this is the place where I will create instances of my item for how many items I want to have in my control. And so the implementation of this method is here, update items. What I do is I look up in the style where my element is that has this specific um, style name. Uh, as you have seen in my style file, the, the element that has a style name, custom items control style. That will define uh, the style of my um, element. Here, the control assumes that this style element is a T rectangle and that it will use the settings of this T rectangle for every T rectangle item that I will create in <coughs> my control. So I will create item count number of T rectangles that will all use the style that is defined as this single style element in the resource, the custom items control style element. So first of all, I try to find it, I look it up, um, and that depends on the stage where you are in uh, using your control. If you just drop it on the form the first time there is nothing yet in the style book so the only place where you find it was the thing that was loaded from the resource if it was already in the style book it could have a new default style so that's the place where it would have to look it up or it could have a custom style and i need to look up the information over there so uh, what i do here is uh, I create, so this is the loop, item count, I create the number of T rectangles 
uh, equal to the item count property set on a control level. Um, okay, so I create them, I give them a position, I set their alignment to AL top to make sure that they appear all under each other. Um, I will first uh, build the demo and show it. Um, I think that will make it easier to understand what is happening. Very important is that we need to register this shape. Why do we need to register it? It's because we will want to use this shape in our style. And the style <coughs> editor needs to know about this class because when you open up the style editor, it needs to know, okay, this, style, this shape has these specific properties, uh, etc. And it already, the style editor itself must be able to paint the shape on the style editor uh, designer. If we have a look at the style file for this uh, control, here you see that we have our rectangle and within this rectangle we will put the shape so in this hierarchy sits our custom shape, the T-diamond shape. We give it a style name. We give it some default colors, uh, a red one with a yellow uh, border. And we force its alignment already to top aligned, meaning that our shape will sit top aligned within our rectangle. So the shape is a child of the T-rectangle. Uh, so that's how we predefine this uh, particular style. So let's build and install the control, add a new project to use our control. And this is the custom shape control. As you can see, <coughs> here we have our T rectangle with our diamond shape inside the rectangle. If I go to the default style. You see here the rectangle, you see here our own custom shape, and you see that we can change its properties uh, any way that we want, like this. And so we can build up our own custom controls made up of any custom shapes that we want. <coughs> so that was the next step in our way to producing custom controls. Now move on to uh, something uh, different, uh, something that you will encounter in uh, many cases when you want to design a real world custom control. Uh, this typically is the case, uh, I'm trying to find some real world, uh, let's say a list box. If you have a list box and you fill the list box with items in the Windows world, all items within our list box have the same uh, look. So in the FireMonkey world, meaning the same style. They, for example, they have a white background. They use the same font to, to draw the text within this um, <coughs> item of the list box. And when they are selected, they are all the same uh, blue and white text. So in the FireMonkey equivalent, all items within our list box have the same style. So we have, we have multiple items, but they share the same style. On the other hand, there might be cases for, let's say for a list box, it's desirable that we define, okay, an item has default white background, black text on it, selected is blue and white text on it. That's desirable that we have just one uh, place where we define how an item appears, that we do not have to bother to create uh, styles and properties for every item in our list box. And we would have a lot of work to do otherwise. In other cases, it is desirable that you have items, things that make up your control where you want to specify for each item in your control, okay, this one must be red, this one must maybe be 
diamond shape, this one, etc. All different. So next steps are uh, having a look at approaches to uh, use these two cases. One style used by multiple elements in your control or every element in your control being styleable, having its own uh, set of um, properties to define the style. So first of all, um, in the first demo, we will have a look at how we would create the items itself. That's, that's of course, the first uh, thing that we need to do if we have a control that has multiple child items. Uh, so let's have a look first at the style template of this uh, control. What do we have here? Here we have um, a style definition, which is again a T rectangle. And this is the style for custom items control. Okay, you will see in the code what we will do with this uh, <laughs> specifically. I have my control that descends from T style control. Uh, same as we know from previous samples, load from resource, get style object. What we do here is introduce a property item count. So this property will control how many items I have within my control. So what I need to do is first have a look at the set item count property setter. So what I do here in set item count is in a private property uh, item count, I update it with the value that was set. I have two methods, update items and update style. Update style will force FireMonkey framework to reload the style to reapply it. Update items, this is the place where I will create instances of my item for how many items I want to have in my control. And so the implementation of this method is here, update items. What I do is I look up in the style where my element is that has this specific um, style name. Uh, as you have seen in my style file, the, the element that has the style name custom items control style. That will define uh, the style of my um, element. Here, the control assumes that this style element is a T rectangle and that it will use the settings of this T rectangle for every T rectangle item that I will create in <coughs> my control. So I will create item count number of T rectangles that will all use the style that is defined as this single style element in the resource, the custom items control style element. So first of all, I try to find it, I look it up, um, and that depends on the stage where you are in uh, using your control. If you just drop it on the form the first time, there is nothing yet in the style book, so the only place where you find it was the thing that was loaded from the resource. If it was already in the style book, it could have a new default style, so that's the place where it would have to look it up, or it could have a custom style, and I need to look up the information over there. So, uh, what I do here <coughs> is uh, I create, so this is the loop, item count, I create the number of T rectangles uh, equal to the item count property set on a control level. Um, okay, so I create them, I give them a position, I set their alignment to AL top to make sure that they appear all under each other. Um, I will first uh, build the demo and show it. Um, I think that will make it 
easier to understand what is happening. So this is our control, and let's say we put five items in the control. So what happened here is it created in our property <coughs> setter for set items count five of these rectangles. If we have a look in our style editor, what we see here, this is the first case where we make every element stylable. So as you can see in my style editor, I have um, all uh, elements available, accessible, I can change um, their look and feel. So for example, uh, here, um, I thought that it would be cool as we are in Italy to create the Italian flag, for example. Maybe I'm wrong with the ordering of the, co of the colors. Is that the correct ordering of the colors? It's the orientation. <laughs> or orientation. <laughs> okay, but it's in Fire Monkey, that should not be a problem. The uh, opposite? Opposite. <laughs> okay. 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 So now we have every element within our control that is fully stylable. Um, if I would create a second instance of this uh, class, you will see that it reuses the style that was already in the style book. So all the items, all the styles, style settings of all my items are in the style book. So as this information is in the style books, it has retrieved this information uh, from the style book. There is some extra work to do because what I do here is add these elements in the style book. But what happens if I would decrease item count? So there I also need to add code if I remove an item at a later time, something that I created, I need to destroy it again. So that's what's happening here. Everything that should not be in the list of items that can be styled, I need to remove them again. So uh, the code that I use here is basically make up a list of elements, items that I expect in my control, create them, make them this way available to the styler and everything that should not be there if it's it's not expected i throw them away i, I destroy them again that's the technique that is used to let's say synchronize what is available in the style editor and what is eventually showing in the control we will see in a moment how that's used in a real life control um, that we created. Another step is, as I indicated, that we have a single style that defines the look and feel for every item in our um, control. So that is in demo uh, nine. Uh, let's have a look at the style file. So what? happens here is that's not that's, that's not correct then nine meanwhile okay so what we have here is our custom item list control style and uh, here <laughs> we have that is the style of the control itself. Control consisting of a rectangle, and within this rectangle, we give a rectangle the style name custom item style, and this will be the style that will be applied to all items, in this case rectangles, that I will create within this control. So a single 
this single T rectangle in our style will define the look and feel of all the items in uh, the control. So uh, this here is everything that you've seen before. In the set item count, I do again an update uh, items. And what I do in items is I locate that, that this one is the most important. I locate my custom item style uh, element within my style template uh, because uh, this here is where I will apply the settings of this <coughs> style element to all my uh, items. So I loop through my items and I apply it. Um, I have between brackets here in comments, I have added an alternative way instead of uh, creating the rectangle and assigning the same fill, the same stroke, etc. I could as well have used the clone uh, method in FireMonkey, so to actually create the clone of the style element that was in my style uh, template. Let's have a look at what happens when we uh, install and use the components. Like this, I add five elements. Here are two important remarks that you will find yourself initially scratching your head uh, when, when some things do not work as you want. If you look at this, you see that when I click my control everywhere in the control, it moves my control, which is basically what you expect uh, from the control. You need to pay attention. These rectangles that are created within the control, if you do not set the locked property to true, you will find yourself dragging but the control will not move. So this locked property on rectangle level, so actually on T-shape level, which are within your control, this locked property will play an important role uh, to make it, I don't know why it's called locked, but okay, it's, it says something that it's, that its position is somehow locked to uh, its uh, owner uh, or parent as you want and um, will move the owner along uh, when I drag it, for example. There was another thing uh, that I wanted to point out that is uh, clip children. Um, clip children, I forced it here in this control to true. Why? If I would not do it, I set it to false here, and I would insert 10 items, you will see that my items will uh, go out of uh, the area of my control. If I set it to true, there is no problem. Let's have a look at the style with the style editor. So this is the template for this uh, control. I have my background, which is this white background. Um, and then I have the definition of the style of this item uh, within my control, which is a yellow um, thing. If I change it to another color, you see that um, <coughs> this style is applied to every item here, in this case, of my control. And that is, think about the T-list box sample where you expect all items will have the same color, the same selection color. This is a typical case where you could apply uh, this technique. So, a final and last example in, in this step-by-step build-up of creating custom controls is now you have seen that uh, in, in my style I have defined, okay, this is a rectangle, everything is built up of a, of a rectangle, or I could have it fixed that, okay, I expect it is a rectangle with some T-text within the rectangle, perhaps also some T-button, but the idea is here, I expect it some fixed things uh, available in the style template. 
nothing prevents you in FireMonkey to make this completely flexible. Meaning that if you create in your style template whatever mixture of um, T shape, descendants, controls, etc., whatever, that you can use this as well in these kinds of scenarios in your uh, control. So let's have a look at the next demo. Demo 10. So what I do here, so basically everything remains the same that you know already, load from resource, get style object, apply style, update items, that's what happens when the property setter and what I do here is I have introduced on component level an item style lookup. So with this property, I can define the name of the style to use for all my items in the control. So think about the previous samples, items that were all items stylable. Next sample, items with the same style. Here in this sample, I want to define, use this specific style for all items in my list. So that's why I introduced the item style lookup uh, property. And I use this uh, property to create for each item in my control a T style control instance and force its uh, style to the style that I have defined uh, here for this control. And finally, add, is, add it as a child of my uh, main control. Let's see how this works when I start to use the component in a new application. <coughs> the names of the controls might seem <coughs> complex but there is some reasoning behind it behind it so it is a, a custom item. Item is fully customizable within an item list. That's why it's called the custom item item list control. So what we do here is now we are going to uh, define <coughs> something completely new that we will use as an item in uh, this uh, control. So we start up the uh, style designer and we create something new. We start from uh, a layout layout so we add this to the style book this is our layout layout and let's define some whatever we want I want a checkbox for example and I want a button oops I want a button in my style Oh, I have two buttons, that's maybe a little bit too much. And let's add some text. The thing is, the designer, you have to click again on the style if you added some, something to update um, the, the designer. Otherwise, if you drag and drop something, it's not immediately uh, refreshing uh, here the preview of the style. So if I take uh, the checkbox, no, let's, let's take the button and let's move it here. Let's take the text. To make it clear, I will add some text like this. And we are ready. This is something that is defined in our style book. Let's see. The name of this style in the style book is new style one. I chose the default name. So what I will do now is set my item style lookup to new style one. So that's the name that it needs to look up in my uh, in the style book. And if I add five items, as you can see now, it created 
uh, five items of this style to um, the control. <coughs> so, in a nutshell, um, this is the, the basic knowledge, if you can call it this way, that we needed to put together to create some of our uh, custom controls. Some custom controls that we will have uh, a look at now. And you are actually the first one in the world outside our lab uh, who is uh, able to have a look at our controls. So uh, let's see what we already cooked up. I start a new uh, FireMonkey application. And I will start with uh, this control, which is a gauge control. So now you might ask yourself, <coughs> How fits the information throughout the 10 demos that you have seen in this particular control? Let's start by looking at the style definition for this control. And here you see a lot of elements. What we have here is an outer <coughs> element, and this is uh, this outer border. So let's change the color to make it clear. So our gauge is made up of this outer board, you can fully customize it. <coughs> then we have the inside of uh, this gauge, and we can change it this way. Actually, we have used here a gradient, so you can uh, assign whatever uh, gradient that you want, like this. Then we have some text that is in our gauge that we can style, we can change the font, the colors, etc. Then we have some division text. So um, the division text is the text of uh, here, what you see here, 0, 10, 20, etc. So this is a typical case where we wanted to have a single place to define the style of this division text and have it applied to, in this case, about 10 division text elements within our control. I, I, okay. So we have a division text that we can change, color, uh, font, etc. A subdivision. Then we have these little uh, lines. As you can see here, we have lines in a bluish color and lines in white, so the division and subdivision lines. Uh, so this is also styleable. So this is the same thing. <coughs> One style defines how all the lines within our control will look like. Then we have the center circle that is attached to our needle. You can also define the color. And here we used a custom shape because there was not really something in the FireMonkey framework to draw something that looks like a needle. So we created a T, TMS, FMX needle shape class <coughs> to draw this needle. And as you can see, we can change the color of our needle uh, this way. And then we have this little inner circle that we can also uh, customize like this. And here we have our uh, gauge control. Remember the difference between the handling of items, all items the same style, items with different styles. We also needed something to have different styles for uh, things within our control, and that's where we move to sections. Here we have a collection of sections that we can add to our gauge. Actually, I added three sections now. The, the goal here is to give every section each its own color. So I have, an, for each, uh, each section, I have a start color and an end color, uh, an end value. So let's uh, give them values to make them 
are really separate, like this. And one like this. So you see three sections. If I now go go to the editor, you find in our um, styler style editor the three sections. So now I can, for example, uh, this is the zone that is fine. It's yellow. This is the zone where it gets dangerous, which is orange. And this is the really <laughs> dangerous zone. And let's make it red. And this way, we have our gauge that is um, that has styleable uh, sections. You can see it's not an instant movement from one position to another position. It moves with some uh, eased animation from one point to another point. Um, okay. Other than this, what else can we do? Now it's a, a gauge with 360 degrees um, and we can also uh, change it to um, I can't remember this this control um, happily plays within a fire monkey so if I rotate the control it's rotate like every fire monkey control I can if I for example that's something nice uh, leave it's reflection effect. So you can see here that the reflection effect plays nicely with uh, this control. Uh, but there was also something, I don't remember it right now. So this here, the 135 to 270 is from this angle to this angle, it needs to show the value of the gauge. But there is also a property, uh, okay, here, here it is. I believe this is because the sections are defined within the full 360 degrees. That's, that's something. But it should all also be possible. Let's, let's start a new. something so that's you see that's why we did not not yet release the control um, but the goal is that you can create um, not only circular gauges but also half circles three quarter of a circle etc a little bit in the same um, thing is a linear gauge so the same uh, thing and uh, the same techniques um, to style all the elements within this uh, control. We have also divisions, subdivisions uh, with the same uh, things that apply. Let's move on to another uh, control, test control that we created, which is this typical uh, seven segments LED control. Here, as you can see, we have created, we have needed to create uh, also a custom shape to draw this seven segment LED. So that's where the shapes uh, were used for. So I can set the value, it updates the value. I can define how many, um, how many uh, num numbers, how num if I increase it. <coughs> like this, but it has not yet, let's see, 
So there is, you can see that there is some more work to do to fine tune it, but it gives you an idea of um, what we did. This is another type of <coughs> such a, a lat matrix uh, control. Uh, same thing here. One letter in this uh, control is a custom shape. So we created a shape that has the whole uh, painting of, of one uh, such item and it uh, paints it and it's <coughs> as you can see it plays nicely within the FireMonkey framework so you can do all trickery on this component of FireMonkey that you uh, want. Another control is uh, this kind of uh, meter control so where the, the values will move um, and the needle will always stay in the middle position. Uh, what I wanted to show today was actually this control uh, hooked up together with another control that we created. This one. Um, this one is interesting to have a look at the style, the compass style. And you see here different needle shapes that were used to create these east-west uh, directions within uh, the control. So the idea was for today to show you this compass control together with this jog meter control uh, on an uh, iPad uh, hooked up to um, the compass that is in your iPad together with the gyroscope in your iPad so that you can see on the jog meter how you hold your iPad and that you can see in what direction we are here. Sadly enough, I updated my iPad with iOS 5, which I believe every developer wanted to do instantly as Apple had released it. And we cannot yet deploy to iOS 5 with the current release of FireMonkey. So I hope that really soon uh, they will add support to um, deploy to iOS 5. But uh, to prove that I do not talk nonsense, uh, we deployed it on the iPad of my wife, <laughs> which is still on the old version of iOS. But I could not take the iPad with me. You will understand that. Uh, but I say, please give it to me to take a screenshot because I at least want to show this uh, to the people here in Italy. Okay. What more did we create? <coughs> we used the same technique, so okay, to, to, to create a clock, but that's not finished yet. It's a little bit the same. We have this one. Do you remember this one? Who remembers this one? Uh, okay, let's think uh, my unit names, something with the units names. Let's start a new put this control, the spinner control in the form run it you see here you see if I drag fast enough it has some this typical how is it called uh, inertia. inertia effect um, with uh, the scrolling uh, so uh, this is also stylable uh, so each um, roller within the control can have a different color for example uh, can have different fonts uh, inside one final control that I wanted to show um, 
and that is actually a little bit designed in a different way. This is a scope control. So you can, it visualizes, for example, signals. So it, if, you, if I would hook it up to something that generates, generates a sinus wave, it will show something like this. And here, the drawing of these lines of the, of the signal, that is done through painting. So here we do not use a set of lines, styleable lines that make up eventually a sinus. Here we do uh, the painting of the signal on top of the control. So if you remember in the first session this technique of combining painting and styling, this is a perfect example of uh, such a control. So um, I think given the time that uh, we do not have time for discussion anymore, but we can discuss afterwards during the dinners, etc. Two resources that I did uh, not want to forget to show you to get started with creating components. Uh, these two URLs give you some information. The best information so far that we found is uh, the source code of the FireMonkey framework itself. And uh, stay tuned for um, the controls that we are currently already working on. And then it's now time for the thing that you all waited for, uh, which is the t-shirts. That's a spinner as a slot machine, right? With cherries and... No, no, I, I used something different. <laughs> so... What I have here is our gauge, and uh, our gauge creates the Fire Monkey T-shirt machine. And so I told the gauge, "Okay, divide yourself in 26 uh, divisions to have the letters of the alphabet." I hooked up the event to set for each division a letter of the alphabet. When I will press the get a random character a button. It will move the needle to some character. And then I can add another character. So the game is, if in your name, first name, last name, this character is in your first name or last name, you are still taking part of the competition. <laughs> I add letters, and eventually I hope that it will stop, and we will have a winner. Is that clear? <laughs> so, we get the first letter, everyone with the letter L in first or last name is still participating. How many people do we have with the letter L and E in first and last name? Raise your hands. So we still, all the others are game over? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So it's about four, I think. Yeah. Uh, Someone uh, with the queue. Everyone's <laughs> out. <laughs> we skip the queue. The queue, no problem. T. Only one winner. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you get the most yes. exclusive one. <laughs> one of ten. Yeah. Do you know because actually it's possible? possible? No, that's, I took a lot because typically Italians are small. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. That's, that's the one of ten. Do you actually know a car who is called one of ten? There is a car and its name is one of ten. It's a Mercedes Brabus. Okay, so uh, let's clear it for the two uh, Fire Monkey t-shirts. No. <laughs> Actually, if you look at the source code, I did really force randomize, so it, it should be random. Where is my app? Okay, the E, the V, who is still participating with the E and the V. We have three, one, three people, so now it's critical. The I, 
Okay, we have a Fire Monkey T-shirt winner here. <laughs> And then the last one, the R to with the oh, no. I. Someone with the Y participating? No. M. Two, two people. Sequence is not important. Okay. D, who is still in the game? Which fighters? You're the only one in the game? Two people in the game? Okay, let's forget about the X. The D, again, two Ds, you see. Who wants it? You're all out? You're in? Yeah. Okay. You're the winner. So, okay, so thank you very much for... Uh